wow. <laughs> Hi, my name's Yardley Whalen. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Just thank you all so much for coming out. We couldn't do it without you. You all brought us and Greta here and I can't wait to see where you bring us in the future. <laughs> so I'm just gonna start with this whole laundry list of people to go through, and then you'll hear Greta speak, I promise. Um, so first up, I'll introduce Mayor Jim Throgmorton. He's joined our climate strike last week, at, or two weeks ago at September 20th, and he's helped us pass our climate crisis plan. So it's pretty awesome. <laughs> So I would like to give city council, our city manager, and Mayor Throgmorton a hand. Yeah. Welcome. Whoa, what a great crowd. It's so good to see all of you and be here welcoming Greta Thunberg here to Iowa City. Closer to the mic. Okay, I understand. Thank you. This has to come up. So every day we hear damaging news, depressing news about all the uh, unfolding damages being caused by climate change. Climate change can seem daunting in scale and complexity. In light of that, one might ask, why should I do anything if my neighbor doesn't act also? Or why should our city do anything unless our neighboring cities do something? Take it upscale. Why should the United States do anything if no other nation is going to act also? We need to flip that questioning line of questioning around. If we don't act, who will? And even if no one else acts, we have a moral imperative to do everything we can. everything we can to avoid harm to future generations, harm to other people who live in other places being inundated or endangered in other ways all around the world right now, and uh, harm to our shared life world. Think ahead. We want to make sure we have a great life world for everybody to live in, species to live in, humans to live in, in the future. So we in Iowa City have embraced this new way of thinking. We have flipped the thinking. In 2017, we adopted a climate action plan, which established some ambitious goals and described a general pathway toward achieving them. Almost nine weeks ago, with a little bit of pressure from our climate strikers, <laughs> we directed our city staff to report back to us within 100 days with a set of actions that will help us achieve those goals for 2030 especially. Just last Tuesday night, we created an 11 person climate action commission to help us reach out to the larger public of Iowa City to help us achieve those goals. We're counting on you, we're counting on all the other people of the city to help us achieve those goals. Yeah. All right, so as I suggested just a second ago, climate strikers led by Massimo Biggers and Yardley Whalen have played a truly major role in conveying the importance of acting now, not just us, but people all around the world. And partly for this reason, I am extremely proud to welcome to Iowa City a courageous young Swedish woman whose words and actions have captured the imagination of, of millions of people around the world, whose words and actions have stimulated students to take part in climate strikes, and have encouraged governments to respond to the existential threat of climate change quickly and effectively. So bravo to everyone involved in this effort, and especially to the climate strikers who pushed us and others, and especially to Greta Thunberg for everything she's done. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Next up, we have Dawson Davenport. 
He's an author, a University of Iowa alumni, and a writer with the Climate Narrative Project, a nationally recognized artist and a member of the Meskwaki Settlement Tribal Council. He has worked with us many times, and he's giving us all his love and support, so give him a hand. All right, beautiful crowd. It's great to see all of you out there. Um, my name is Dawson Davenport. I'm from the Meskwaki Nation, located here in central Iowa. I'd like to first begin by remembering my ancestors and those who have fought and died to ensure that we as young people have a place to call home and a future. For centuries, the native and indigenous people have fought for our inherent right to the natural world, the plant life, and the water. Men and women have stood and fought to bring awareness to the injustices we face and now climate disaster is spilling into everyone's lives and that is why I feel like it is very important the work that Greta is doing. It's imperative that we stand behind our youth and support our youth and listen to our youth. A few years ago, a young, a young person by the name of Bobby Jean Three Legs took a group of runners to President Obama's doorstep and we got the No Dapple movement from that. I stood with those kids. I watched them. I encouraged them to keep running. A few months ago, while I was here studying art, I had the opportunity to go to one of these high schools here in in Iowa City and I spoke to a class and I talked about the things that I've, I've done in my life to bring awareness to climate change and to the climate issues we face as an indigenous native people. And today that class is up here. It was kind of, it was kind of, uh, it was kind of funny to see uh, the post of, um, Mosmo standing outside on a Friday talking about these issues and I thought that was very very inspiring and that's why I still continue to stand behind the Iowa City Youth Strikers. We worked together for months to to bring awareness to to bring these ideas out and and to bring awareness to climate change and to the unfair chance that we have as young people of a livable future. So I'm here to share a message that I was raised with and that it is that we need to give back what we took and to only take what we need. I'm here to share. I'm here to show my continued support for the young people and their desire to have a healthy, livable planet. I'm also here to say that we all need to unite, we all need each other in this fight for a, a, a healthy planet. We all need each other, young, old, no matter what race, we need all of us to be on board in this fight. The many rivers flow to one sea. Lastly, I'm here to demand that the University of Iowa shut down their coal plant. Yeah. And to create a new vision for the future of the city and our historical territory, the Meskwaki, and to all the many nations, the tribal nations that occupied this space of what is now Iowa. So again, I wanna thank the organizers and the supporters, I want to thank this, the Iowa youth, uh, climate strikers, and again, I want to thank Greta for being here and all the, the youth who are standing up for our planet. Thank you all. Water is life.
Next up, I'll bring up City High students Alex Howe and Esty Brady. Okay, so, is this on? This is not on. I'm going. Okay, so for this next, for this next part, uh, we're gonna need everybody in the crowd's help here today. So when either of us say, President Harold, you guys will all shout, no more excuses. So let's give it a try. President Harold? No more excuses! That's wonderful. The Iowa City School Board and Iowa City Council passed new climate action plans this spring. Now it's time for the University of Iowa to unite with our city and commit to joining the Iowa City Climate Action Plan. <laughs> President Harold. Every day, the University of Iowa burns coal in its, cower, in its power plants. Coal kills. Coal kills miners. Coal leaves deadly coal ash. Coal leaves deadly coal slurry. A preschool is only 200 yards from the coal plant. Coal is the number one contributor to carbon emissions. President Harold. No more excuses. The University of Iowa. The University of Iowa has also doubled its use of natural gas at the power plant. Fracking natural gas destroys communities, water supplies, and methane emissions from gas are worse than CO2 emissions. President Harold. No the University of Iowa students have voted for a climate emergency. Now it is time for the University of Iowa president to step up to that promise and update its old sustainability plan for a climate emergency. President Harold. No more excuses. The University of California will be carbon neutral in 2025. Many other schools are carbon neutral as well. Over 7,000 universities have declared a climate emergency. The University of Iowa needs to stop coal and do the same. President Harold. No more excuses. The University of Iowa should be a beacon of light for our community. Instead, the university sustainability goals were written in 2008. That's over a decade ago. These goals are outdated, and we have a climate emergency on our hands. President Harold. No more excuses. We also have a problem in all of Iowa. We are going through record flooding, but last year, greenhouse gas emissions increased by 3%. Governor Reynolds. No more excuses. So, University of Iowa students and faculty, this is your issue now. Are you going to let the university sell its dirty power plant to a private company that will burn more coal and natural gas, or you step up and tell President Harold, No more excuses. It's time for the University of Iowa to hold a public forum with Mayor Throgmorton and commit to a town gown climate action and commit to 100% renewable energy by 2030. And in coal burning and in coal burning in the power plant now. In coal 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 now. President Harold. No more excuses. Governor Reynolds. President Trump. No more excuses. Thank you. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> oh, oh, right there. Right there. No, no, you're good. All right, next up, we're going to have another City High student. Shoshi Hemley to speak. 
Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming out here. Thank you to Greta. Sacrifices. That is what climate change is about. People around the world have already made countless sacrifices because of climate change. Those sacrifices range from losing their lives in floods and hurricanes to losing their livelihoods to some of the worst flooding in the Midwestern fields. In my mother's home country of the Philippines, 50% of the worst typhoons that have ever hit that nation happened within the last 15 years. The worst, Typhoon Yolanda, killed 6,300 people. Indigenous people all around the world have sacrificed their land due to corporate greed. But climate change is not only about the sacrifices we have already made. It is also about the sacrifices we must make. The sacrifices we need to make now. And if you say you can't, trust me, you can. Being aware of climate change simply isn't enough. This is a crisis, an emergency, and we don't have time. Solving climate change will take an entire societal upheaval. <laughs> Governments and corporations need to change. They must change. They must put their people before their power, their money, and their greed. They must make that sacrifice. We must all be ready to put in time, energy, resources, and money into changing the way our society functions. The people up here on stage have sacrificed part of their education every Friday to strike for the climate and demand action. We together made that sacrifice. So while I am astounded and so very, very grateful for this huge turnout we have today, we will need you again and again. The fight does not end today. And to those who think nothing will come of this, who doubt our power, we have striked at times with just four people. So often we were a small group of no more than a dozen sitting outside the Iowa City Community School District offices demanding action because we knew we had to make that sacrifice. So what did we get done? We have already passed climate resolutions in Iowa City and the Iowa City Community School District. And we did that with only around 20 students. But imagine what we can do if every person in this crowd starts showing up and making sacrifices. Imagine what can happen when the university gets on board. Imagine what can happen when our government gets on board. And imagine what can happen when our world leaders get on board. When everyone, together, as a community, starts making sacrifices, we can help create a better planet. So let's make these sacrifices now to prevent the devastating sacrifices we will have to make in the future. Thank you. Next, we have the kid who started it all, Massimo Biggers. Yeah. 
What an amazing crowd! We are honored and humbled to be here today. Last year, we launched our climate strike at the school district building. Pe people dismissed us, laughed at us, but even though our numbers were small, I knew we were never alone. Greta Thunberg was striking with us, no matter what, no matter where. Greta was always striking, she didn't stop. That didn't just inspire us, it emboldened us. It reminded us of our great history of resistance. And we continued to strike. And we won a climate plan from the Iowa City School Board. And we continued to strike. And we won a climate crisis plan from the Iowa City Council. And we continue to strike to make the University of Iowa end coal and join our city climate plan. The university's sustainability goals were written in 2008. Some people in this crowd weren't even born then. The university goals are obsolete. The university must step up and declare a climate emergency. Greta Thunberg changed the United States before she even arrived in a sailboat. She has changed the way we talk and act about our climate emergency. Greta has put science back in our decisions. She has held our political leaders accountable, even that dude in the White House on Twitter. She has shown us that the strikes are a vital part of democracy and our future on this planet. Thank you, Greta. You have truly th changed our lives. You, change, you changed my life. And you have reminded me that it is not a matter of having hope. Hope resists. Please, everyone welcome Greta Thunberg. incredibly proud and honored to be here in Iowa City and in beautiful Iowa with all of you and it's just so many people I don't think any one of us expected this many people uh, thank you so much everyone for coming here And of course, a special thank you to, to the organizers and for, for the strikers who have been striking Friday after Friday, not giving up. So, Shushi, Esti, Yardley, Diego, Alex, and Massimo, and everyone else. And uh, thank you. I, I think every one of us owe you a great, we owe you so much and you have really done so much for every one of us. And we recognize we are on indigenous Iowa land and the land of Sauk and Meskwaki. We thank Dawson and all the Meskwaki who are with us today. And this is the real hope. So many people gathering here on a weekday with such a short notice. This is real hope to me. Last week and the week before that, well over seven million people joined the
the climate strikes. Seven, over 7 million people in more than 180 countries. And, and that is not something you can continue to ignore. We told world leaders to act on the science and we demanded a safe future for us and for everyone. But they didn't listen. As we all know, the UN Climate Action Summit was a failure. And that was unfortunately what we had expected. To stand behind and speak the science is still too uncomfortable for them and that needs to change. But no matter what, we need to continue. No matter how hopeless the situation may seem like, we must always carry on and we must never allow ourselves to give up. That is simply not an option. We teenagers and children shouldn't have to take the responsibility. But right now, the world leaders keep acting like children and somebody needs to be the adult in the room. And we promise we will go on every Friday for as long as it takes. And the next global climate strike is on November 29th. But of course, we strike every week. And we have to prepare ourselves to go on for a very long time, for years. But that will not stop us. We have reached a tipping point where enough people have had enough and together we are unstoppable. Yeah. And we will not beg world leaders to care and to act. They have ignored us in the past and they will ignore us again. We will instead tell them that if they won't do it, then we will. Because the world is waking up and we are the change. And change is coming, whether they like it or not. Thank you once again and have a great day and continue never give up. Thank you.